Welcome to Copilot Studio Agent Academy. This is Mission 9, add an agent flow to your topic for automation. My name is Eliza Benitez and I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft. In this mission, we'll explore what agent flows are and why you should use them to enhance your agent. We'll also learn about expressions and best practices for agent flows. Lastly, we'll dive into adding an agent flow to a topic. Let's get started. So what are agent flows? Agent flows are structured step-by-step -step workflows that your agent executes to automate tasks and connect with other applications and services. Now, unlike autonomous agents that use AI to make decisions on the fly, agent flows are deterministic workflows that follow the same path every time to ensure consistent and reliable results. They help your agent do things, not just say things to users, and are reusable across topics and agents with triggers from user messages, events, or other applications. So how do they enhance your agent? Well, agent flows transform your conversational agent into an automation powerhouse by expanding capabilities beyond chatting to taking real action and interacting with systems. They provide the perfect combination of reliable, predictable automation with flexible AI decision-making. For example, you can automate complex tasks like automated invoice processing that reads documents, checks enterprise data, and routes approvals. Since everything is built right into Copilot Studio, you get a single unified platform where agents make smart decisions while agent flows execute actions the same way every time. Now let's next talk about expressions. Expressions are small formulas or commands that help your agent flow work with data by calculating values, formatting text, making decisions, or pulling specific information from inputs. They use functions similar to Excel like concat to join text, if for conditional logic, and UTC now for timestamps. These functions enable you to transform static workflows into intelligent, responsive automation. For example, the expression of concat, hello, first name, creates personalized greetings. So how do you create an agent flow? Well, there's two methods. First of all, there's natural language authoring where you describe what you want in plain English and Copilot builds it for you. Secondly, there's a visual designer canvas where you add actions, conditions, and loops. The workflow follows a simple pattern. It starts with a trigger, then actions, followed by results with built-in testing to validate functionality before going live. Version control saves your work automatically, allowing you to restore previous versions and experiment safely while building your automation. For best practices, start simple with basic tasks like sending messages, then build complexity gradually while using clear descriptive action names that your team can understand. Always use the flow checker to find and fix errors before publishing and also save and test frequently to take advantage of version history. Use parameters and expressions wisely to make flows dynamic and keep your flows clean by removing unused actions. In this lab today, we're going to create an agent flow that sends an email to the manager to notify them of a device request. We'll next add the agent flow to a topic and enhance it with additional functionality. Lastly, we'll test the agent end-to-end -to, -end to understand the automation. The end result is an agent flow that handles the entire device request process from the employee submitting the request to automatically notifying the manager by email. Now, before we begin, make sure you've already completed the earlier missions. You'll need a dedicated development environment 
and access to the SharePoint site that you would have created in the course setup mission. Let's begin. Let's start by integrating the agent flow directly into our existing topic structure. In the request device topic, scroll down to the Ask with Adaptive Card node and add a new node. Select Add a Tool and in the Basic Tools tab, choose New Agent Flow. This loads the Agent Flows Designer where we'll build our automation. The Agent Flows Designer loads with two central components already in place. At the top, we can see the trigger called When an Agent Calls the Flow. This is what allows our Copilot Studio agent to invoke this automation. Secondly, the action called Respond to the Agent sends output values back to our agent, creating a seamless data exchange between conversation and automation. Now we need to define what data the agent flow will receive from the agent. Select the trigger to add three inputs. Select Add an input and enter Device SharePoint ID. This will store the selected device's ID from our adaptive card. The next input we'll add is user to capture the requester's name from system variables. Lastly, we'll add additional comments to include any user comments submitted. Next, we'll update the additional comments input to be optional since users might leave this blank in the adaptive card. Select the ellipsis icon and choose Make the field optional. This prevents the agent flow from failing when users submit requests without additional information. Now for the core data operation, let's retrieve the complete device information from SharePoint. Select the plus icon under the trigger and search for get item to add the get item action from the SharePoint connector. This action will fetch all the device details using the ID received from the adaptive card. Let's make this action clear and purposeful by renaming it to get device. This helps with flow readability and maintenance. Configure the site address to the Contoso IT SharePoint site and set the list name to the devices list. For the ID field, use the lightning bolt icon to select device SharePoint ID from the trigger inputs using dynamic content. Here's a performance optimization tip. Select Show All to view advanced parameters and set limit columns by view to all items. This limits the data return to only necessary columns, making our agent flow more efficient and faster to execute. Now we'll add the communication component that notifies managers about device requests. Add a new action and search for Send an email to select the Send an email v2 action from the Office 365 Outlook connector. Similar to the previous lab exercise, you'll need to sign in and allow access to create the connection. Next, rename the action to send an email to manager. And let's begin configuring the parameters. Set the to field to yourself for testing purposes. Copy and paste the subject from the lab exercise and also copy and paste the body message. This structured message contains placeholders for dynamic content, including manufacturer, model, a link to the SharePoint item, and user comments. We'll replace these placeholders with real data using dynamic content. Use the lightning bolt icon to insert the user input for the requester's name. Select the user input and select add. Repeat for the manufacturer value placeholder and the model placeholder by selecting the dynamic content value from the get device action. Lastly, let's create a clickable hyperlink using HTML tags around the link to item dynamic content. Now all of this can be followed step by step in the lab exercise. Add the user input again in the additional comments line. Next, we'll level up our skills with a more advanced expression technique. We'll use an expression to handle optional comments elegantly. Create an if-else statement using if empty functions to display the text none when the additional comments field is empty or use the actual comment value when provided. This creates a professional email regardless of whether users add comments. Finally, let's ensure our agent receives confirmation data by configuring the respond to agent action. 
add a text output named model value and use dynamic content to populate it with the model from our get device action. This allows our agent to reference the selected device model in its response to users. Save the agent flow as a draft. Then we're going to enhance the flows metadata by updating the details in the overview tab with a clear name, and then we'll use the AI generated description feature. Once everything is configured, save the updated details. Go back to the designer tab and select publish to make this agent flow available as a tool. Let's return to our agent and topic to add a newly created agent flow. Select agents in the left-hand menu and select the Contoso help desk agent. Then navigate to the topics tab and select the request device topic. Now we'll add our published agent flow as a node in our topic. Scroll down to the ask with adaptive card node and add a new node. Select add a tool and in the basic tools tab, you'll see our send device request email agent flow that we created and published. Select the agent flow. We now need to connect the user's device selection to our agent flow input. For the device SharePoint ID agent flow trigger input, select the ellipsis icon and choose the device selection ID variable. This variable captures the specific device the user selected from our adaptive card. Next, we'll map the user information by selecting the ellipsis icon for the user input. Switch to the system tab and select the user display name variable. This system variable automatically captures the display name of the internal user interacting with the agent, providing personalization without additional user input required. Now for the sophisticated part in handling optional user comments. Expand advanced inputs to see the additional comments field, then select its ellipsis icon. Switch to the formula tab and expand the formula field. We're going to use a PowerFX expression to handle the conditional data. Enter if is blank functions to create our conditional statement. Inside the brackets, reference the comments ID variable, which captures the comment field from our adaptive card. Then complete the expression and reference the same comment ID variable. This passes an empty string if no comment is provided, or uses the actual comment if provided by the user. Select insert to apply our PowerFX expression. We now connected our conversational interface to our automation backend. Next, we're going to add two more essential nodes to the topic for confirmation feedback and closure of the conversation. Let's start with adding a send a message node below the agent flow to send a confirmation back to the user. Start by typing thanks in the message field, then select insert variable to add the user's name. Select the system tab, search for user and select user display name. This personalizes the message with the actual user's name from the system. We'll update the message and then use insert variable again. This time, go to the custom tab and search for the model value variable and select it. Complete the message by letting the user know that their request has been submitted and will be reviewed by their manager. To end the conversation, we'll direct this custom topic to a system topic. Add another node and select topic management, then select go to another topic and select the end of conversation topic. This redirects users to a system topic designed to close the conversation properly. Save the topic to save all our enhancements. We're now ready to test and validate different scenarios to ensure our agent handles various user behaviors. Let's first test the full happy path with user comments. Refresh the testing pane and select the activity map icon. Enter, I need a laptop to trigger our available devices topic. When the agent responds with available devices and asks if you'd like to request one, respond with yes to activate our request device topic. Notice how the agent transitions to the topic and displays the adaptive card with the SharePoint data. Now let's test the interactive capabilities. Select one of the devices and enter a comment in the comments field. This tests both our device selection functionality 
and our conditional comment handling logic. Submit the adaptive card to trigger our complete automation workflow. When prompted, select Allow to authorize the agent's use of your credentials for the SharePoint and Outlook connector actions. Watch as our agent flow executes in the background and returns the device model information back to our agent in the confirmation message. The conversation then transitions to the end of conversation topic, providing proper closure. Enter yes and rate the experience. Then select no to complete our testing of the end-to-end -end happy path. Check your email inbox to verify the automated notification was sent successfully. Notice how the email contains all the dynamic information, including your specific comment. Select the hyperlink to confirm it opens the exact SharePoint item. This validates our complete data integration chain. Let's next test our conditional logic by repeating the process, but without entering comments. Enter I need a laptop again and respond with yes to the question, but this time select a device without adding any comments. Submit the request. Check the email and notice how it displays none or the additional comments section instead of showing blank or causing errors. This demonstrates our PowerFX conditional expression works perfectly regardless of whether a comment has been provided. Our final scenario tests the conversation routing when users decline requests. Refresh the test pane and enter I need a laptop again, but this time respond with no to the question. Watch how our agent intelligently routes the conversation to the goodbye topic instead of the request device topic. This comprehensive testing demonstrates how the agent orchestrates conversations in a smart and professional way, regardless of user input. Mission accomplished. You've learned how to build an agent flow and add it to a topic to handle the entire device request process. You also learned how to redirect the agent from one topic to another. And that wraps up mission nine of the Copilot Studio Agent Academy. So keep experimenting, keep building, and as always, keep learning. We'll see you in the next mission of the Agent Academy.